Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and our countdown to Christmas with simple forging projects. Today we're going to work on a project suggested by Aaron Dennis and that is a small dinner bell, a triangle dinner bell that is a tree ornament. So we're going to start with a piece of quarter inch round bar. It's about 12 inches long to make the bell out of. That should give us roughly four inches per side. By the time we're done it'll probably be a little bit bigger than that. And I've got another piece that's about eight inches long for the stick that you ring the bell with, the dinger, whatever you want to call it. We'll see if we like the size this ends up afterwards. You can adjust the sizes, bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. These are just cold rolled mild steel, so let's head over to the forge. Let's get started. I like my little dinner triangles with a little tapered end on them, just because I think it makes it look like you cared. And I usually put a little bit of a bend in the end of this, just a little recurve or something. This serves no real purpose, it's just there for looks. I want to do the same thing to both ends. Try and bend them so they're on the same side. In round bar, if you get them off, you can twist the bar and it won't show that you twisted it. So you can fix it pretty readily. See, and I got them 180 degrees off because I was talking. So I'm going to go ahead and twist that and get those in line. Like I say, round bar doesn't show when you twist it like this. So that's no problem at all to line those up. Next thing I do is let this cool so I can mark where I want to bend it. Now this is the third one of these that I have done working on this video and the previous examples have been a disaster. This is relatively simple, it's a simple concept, it shouldn't be all that hard to do. But because I'm working in a gas forge and I'm getting heats that are really long, everything is floppy, it won't bend where you want it to bend, it's just really a pain in the neck. I'm going to go to the torch which is a just one extra piece of equipment, but it's going to make this very simple to do and almost guaranteed. So now that I've drawn those out, I end up with about 14 inches of total bar length. And I don't really want to divide it in perfectly equal thirds. This is still a little bit hot to hold on to, so I can't grab it very hard here. So I'm going to make the first one four and three quarters. The next one four and a half inches. And that leaves me with the third one also four and a half. And that's so that these ends don't come together like this, they come together like this. And that's just something that I kind of like in my triangles. You can play around and see what you like. But now we're just going to heat just the bend point with a torch and I think that's going to make our lives much easier. Like I say, if you heat all this up, it gets really floppy, you get a big wide bend, you got to mess around straightening it, it cools off fast, you're back in the fire, then it's floppy again. It just turned into a real nuisance, so we're going to go to the torch. Now, something else I've done is I've made this little block up that just fits in the vise. It's a 60 degree angle here, so when I bend it I can compare it to this, and if I need to straighten and refine I can hammer on this back surface and it provides a real nice reference point. Again, a little bit more involved than I would typically get for this series of videos, but it's really helpful. So I'm just going to heat this up with a torch. I don't want very much hot, just enough so I can make this bend. You know, this quarter inch rod, you might be able to bend cold, but it probably wouldn't be a very neat bend. And I'm going to put it on my jig here, grab it with a pair of tongs, and make that bend. Very nice and simple. Exact same thing at the next point. I'm 
those come out closer to exact than I really thought they would, but not bad. It's a little bit off this way, so I'll put it back in the vise and straighten that out. This is real easily done cold. There's not much forge work in this little project. Now let's make something to ring it with and try it out. I'm just going to put a little curly cue on the end and then forge a ring. Very simple little thing here. This is quite possibly the most basic of projects, other than the difficulty of bending when you're trying to do it without a torch. We just come back to the vise. Of course, the tripod and the camera are in the way there. And we can kind of bend that up. So just something to Make a little ring so you can hang this from a, a hook right next to your ornament on the tree. And that way you've got the ringer right with the hook, the uh, dinner bell. And I really think for this piece that's all you need to do. You make any kind of a ring or finial up here you want to to hang it from. So once that cools, let's try the bell out. So here's our little dinner triangle. Really doesn't sound half bad. Likes to swing around a lot though. But mostly it's an ornament for the tree, so it's not going to get rain very much. But just for an experiment, why don't we go ahead and heat this back up and quench it and see if it changes the character of the ring any. Now this isn't hardenable steel, so there's no need to temper it. We're just quenching it to see if there's an effect here. So did that make it sound any different? I don't really think it did. So here's the before. And the after. To quench something like this, you can't later heat it up and wax it. You can probably might be able to heat it up a little bit, but I think instead this time I'm going to take this to the power wire wheel and I'm just going to give it a quick buffing on that wheel. Be careful not to catch the loose ends on the wheel. Be real aware when you're around a wire wheel. They're a very dangerous tool. So I'm going to do that real quick and just kind of give this a nice little silver patina on that wheel. Clean it up. We'll call it done. So a cute little dinner bell for a Christmas tree ornament. Don't know that you're going to get too many people to dinner with that, but that means there's more for you. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this was one I fussed and fiddled with in the prototype stage and, and just doing samples to get ready for the video. And the main problem was simply too much heat. If you're using a gas forge like I typically do in the shop, you get long heats and thin bars get really floppy and unruly and it's hard to do controlled bends. A torch is excellent for that. If you don't have a torch and you're working in mild steel like we are here, you can quench one end just short of the bend point, then grab it with a pair of tongs and quench the other end right up short of the bend point. Leave that little quarter to half inch space hot and then quickly bend it. In small material, it cools off really fast and it's a little harder to do, so I still prefer the torch, but you can do it without. And if you're working in a coal forge, you can get shorter heats, but it's still going to be more than you want to bend, so you're probably still going to need to do some selective cooling. You can also just pour water over the areas you want to cool, but that tends to make a bigger mess, especially if you have a dirt floor shop. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done it already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. Have a happy holiday. We'll see you later.